Shalom, Rabbi. Shalom, Racha. We are in New York. Today is February 28th. Hey, Badar. And with Rabbi David Pinto. This is for the program Profiles of Faith, about the collective memory of the elders. Can you tell us what you think about bringing the memory of Judaism for the elders? I was asking to myself, why Abraham Avinu, his name was Avery. Like uh, Avery, that means the past, Avar. The Jewish people at the time, they called them Avery. I think even the Avrit, the language, Lashon Kodesh, is named Avrit from the word the past. Our uh, Hachamim said that why Abraham was called Avery? Because every from the word, the whole world at that time they were idolatry of the Abu Dazara, and the rest of the world was only Avram Abinu. Avram Abinu was the only one who was Me'ever Asheni. Ever is as well the word of side. That means Avram Abinu was watching the rest of the world and he saw himself that he is not like them. Everybody was idolatry, and he, he was from the other side. And I think from that moment started that the Jewish people, their name was Avrim, that we belong to the past. We belong to Avraham Abinu. Avraham Abinu was the first one that he ignored the idolatry, and he was under the side, and that's why Hashem chose him. He chose Abraham because Abraham Avinu, he was on the other side of the rest of the world. And you have to know one thing, all our religion is based with the past. So you're saying without the past, there is no future? Without the past, there is no future. And our past is this heritage that we got from Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, that they were on one side, and the rest of the world were on the other side. But more than that, he says, Vayigadta lebincha. Yeah. And I would like just to tell you something. I was brought up with Imuna, with faith. Up to now, always, my reference is my father, my grandfather. My father told me, my father told me what he heard from his father. And uh, a lot of times my father used to say, I heard my father telling, telling me what he heard from his father. So this is a generation. That's what the Torah said. Why Hashem loved Abraham? The Torah answered, Hashem loved Abraham Abinu. Why he loved him? The Torah said, the answer quick. Because Hashem knew that Abraham, he would give an order to his children. He would teach them the way how to fear Hashem and to do Torah and mitzvot. You yourself come from a great family of uh, tzaddikim, of holy men. Tell us about your family and what you learned from your family. My father always told me, David, the more you ask, you will have more questions. You will have the answers after. And now I am 62 years old. Do I have all the answers? No, I don't have them. Because there is some questions that I have to ask, to understand, but there is some questions that to ask them, maybe it will confuse me. I don't want to be confused in my emuna. You have a luxury that you grew up with emuna. But what do you tell a young person who grows up without emuna, so for this generation, you have to answer questions. For this generation, I have answers to give them. But those, those answers, those answers, they, they will not answer the real questions. The real Jewish education is, I'm telling you, this is the truth. This is the strong emuna. But, as I said, in our time, People need to know. And Baruch Hashem, we can provide them answers. And there is answers. If I might tell you a small story. 
it's a fabulous story. In Morocco, where I was born, we built the soccer as every Jew. And in the soccer, my father, Alaba Shalom, he hung up a chair in the soccer. As you know, every day in the soccer, we invite Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, the seven tzaddikim, our guests of uh, Sukkot. We invite them to come to the soccer. I was a baby. For the first time, I saw the chair hanging in the soccer, in the center of the soccer. I said to my father, Papa, what's this? He said, this is for our guest of honor tonight, Avraham Abinu. And really, I thought that Avraham Abinu is going to come. In the evening, we saw everybody sitting, and I was looking to the chair, up to the chair, and I said to my father after, Papa, but where is Avraham? He said, you don't see him? I said, no, I don't see him. He said, well, one day you will see him. I said, maybe one day. So after the seven days of Sukkot, I did not see nothing, nobody. And I remember every night he used to change, he used to say this, tonight it's for Yitzhak, and then Yaakov. Every night he used to mention a name of a tzaddik. At the end of, I did not see nothing. The next year, again, the repetition of the Sukkah. And again, I asked my father, Papa, last year, you told me if I saw him. I did not see him. I think you think tonight I will see him. He said, maybe. As you know, I did not see nothing. No, nothing. And we, we were brought up in this way. And of course, never we will see Abraham, Isaac, Yaakov, like in the Brit Mila, where I invite Elia or Navi in the Brit. We believe Elia is there. But do we see Elia? No. We don't see Leo. But this is the way we teach our children to believe on what you do not see. It's like when Hashem gave the Torah, the Torah said, they saw the voices. A voice, you don't see the voice. You hear the voice, you don't see the voice. So I learned that in, in Imuna, in faith, you, you believe what you do not see. You see what you do not see. It's interesting, as you're talking, I think this generation talks about love, and you cannot see love. And they talk about emuna, you cannot see it, it's not there. Once upon a time, you know, love was something you didn't talk much about, but emuna you saw all day long. And if you don't see emuna, why would you see love? It leads me to the next question, which is, what brings the Ahavat Hashem in you? And not just Ava, but compared to Yer Atashem, God is so beyond big, is everything. How can you get to love Hashem? There's no mitzvah to love your father, there's no mitzvah to love your mother, but the mitzvah la avodet Hashem ba'ava, b'simcha. A baby, when you give, for, for the first time in his life, when you give him a sweet, he doesn't know what it is a sweet. He may refuse to take the sweet because he does not know a sweet or a chocolate. David Amelech said, Ta'amur okit of Hashem. Test Hashem and you will see that Hashem is good. Before you test who is Hashem, you cannot know who is Hashem. So there is something that I would like to tell you. It depends on the education. You cannot buy a in the shop. You can buy a clothes, you can buy a suit. You cannot buy emunah, you cannot buy love of Hashem. To love Hashem, it will not come just like that. This is come from the beginning, like you give to the child for the first time a sweet, to test it. He's curious to see what kind of, what's this? And when he tests it, he will see that it's good. He will not ask questions. He will love it. The same with, with love Hashem, there is always a beginning, the parent. If it was not my father who gave me the love of Hashem, who teach me how to act, how to believe, how, how would I know that there is Hashem? So it's part of our responsibility to transmit yes, the yes. knowledge of God, and once you know, you taste and you love. Yes. And now tell us about your 
inner love of Hashem. I would like just tell you something. Sometimes I feel that I don't love enough Hashem as I should do. Because there is no limit of loving of Hashem. You know, sometimes I realize that I didn't do enough in my life. I didn't do enough for Hashem. There is no, no limit. There is, every time we discover Hashem, Bemet, I'm telling you, I would like just to tell you something. One day I had an appointment, somebody from uh, the policeman, they called me, and they told me that they would ask me some questions about somebody. At the beginning, I was a little bit shocked. What did they want to ask me? What for? And all night, I couldn't sleep. What they want to ask me? And I was afraid, maybe, I don't know, I, I couldn't have any answer. What did they want from me? And then, when they asked me the question about somebody, I realized that they did not come for me. They come to ask you for somebody. So I relax. You know, I promise you, I said to myself, can you imagine, David, the big surprise that a man is sitting in front of Hashem. And Hashem will ask him questions. But before, he doesn't know what kind of questions he will ask him. You know, I realize that I don't love Hashem enough. You had pachad. Pachad. I, I, I realized that from a man, I was afraid more than I, was, I am afraid of Hashem. So this is a work. This is a, something that we built up our imuna, we built up our love of Hashem every day, every day. When I look at the face of Rav Pinto, I see really pure love. What connects you? That clean, pure love that I see when I hear you talk of Hashem. Because I think my, my reference is my rabbis. My rabbis, most of my rabbis, they always, uh, I try to, to think about them. I try to, to think how they served Hashem. I, I, I read a lot of books about tzaddikim, how they served Hashem. And of course, my big reference is my father. You know, my father, a lot of times I, I used to see him looking just like that, up to the sky, and he say, Ah, Hashem. I have, once, once I took a picture of my father, who was just uh, doing, you know, who was just looking, you know, at, this, at the sky, and he, he did a smile, and they said, Ah, Hashem. I said to myself, David, don't tell me your father looked at Hashem. He said, Hashem, no. But he feel, and that give me Ah, that gave me something to uh, so, something to think about. I said, look, this man, this man, he loves something that he don't see. How did he get it? How? So he feel it. This is feeling, you know. It's like you go to a perfume shop. You don't buy the perfume, but you smell the perfume. You smell the perfume. Tell us about your the name of your father and your grandfather. Those who don't know your shoshelet. It's very important to have a reference of a grandfather because it's a transmission. And there is a big difference of a, a transmission of knowledge or heritage. If somebody dies, he leaves a heritage. He leaves something. He leaves uh, money, houses. He leaves something. But there is something else. This is something it's not real, it's not money, it's knowledge, it's faith. And that, it depends how the parent transmits this to the children. For instance, we can see in the table, a family sitting. On one side, on one hand, you have a table, which you, they, they sing for Shabbat, and there is the Var Torah, and then after, there is a bad language, Lashon So it's a contradiction. What kind of heritage 
a child will take from that table. The Dva Torah, you know, it, it will be forgotten. The table of my father, he used to talk stories about uh, stories, even news, what's going on in the, the, in the week. And uh, f my father, Alava Shalom, it was very important for him to link what's going on in the world with the Torah. He said, well, what's going on today? Well, maybe it's a reference with that prophet. The prophet said that before Mashiach will come, it's going to happen this, they're going to happen. A lot of times, a, a lot of times I said to my father, but Papa, every time you say this is where I approach Mashiach, this is where I approach Mashiach, and we don't see Mashiach coming. So till when? He said, well, yeah, we have to go step by step. <laughs> I read a little bit of a book that you wrote, and I was impressed that I saw that you said you didn't want to be a rabbi. And my father, Alav Shalom, he wanted me to, to go from Morocco to France to England. My rabbis are all Ashkenaz. I was in the yeshiva, and I left the yeshiva, and then all my, uh, all my knowledge, emuna, came from my father. But when I was 22 years old, I did, not, I did not know what to do, to carry on study Torah, but just to go to work. That was for me a big dilemma, what to do. And for two, three years, I was out of the yeshiva. And I was searching myself what to do. But one thing kept, kept me going along. I was always Korea, Haitim, always every day, a few hours, open a book to study Torah. And I was searching, searching what to do. And a lot of times my father told me, David, you have to teach others. At the beginning I didn't want. And then a few years later, when I, I got married, I told my father, Papa, I did not decide yet what to do. To be a rabbi as you want, or just to work. And at the time, I used to make my living through the books I used to write. I used to write books about uh, uh, my family, I used to sell them. That was my, my income. I said to my father one day, I want to ask you something, but it's going to hurt you. He told me, ask, I said, why you be cruel to me? Why you send me to the yeshiva at the age of eight, and I did not see you till the age of 17. That means nearly nine years I didn't see you. So that means the love that a father should give to his child, he did not give me that. He said, David, one day you will tell me thank you. And I told him, why didn't it come from our wedding? He said, for that as well, one day you, t you will tell me thank you. The next year, I had a baby, and my father came for the Brit Mila. It was a Sunday. He said, if I would come for the wedding, I would not come for the Brit, because it was, the Brit was in France. Then I started to build the first yeshiva, and the second yeshiva, and the third, and I started, one day I said to myself, I am from those people who came from the past. I saw that uh, Baruch Hashem, when I used to give some shiurim, people they used to like it. And then that gave me chizuk. his chizuk to give. And then the first time in Lyon, I said I will be, do a big shiur, and there were there few thousand people. I was at the time 32 year old. So that was for me a big chizuk. So from that time I started. And then, five years ago, I went, I went to Ashdod, to the grave, the cave of my father. And I was looking at him, to the cave, grave. And I was smiling. And I said to myself, Papa, do you look at me? Do you see me? Of course no. Do I see you? I can only see you in my mind. But I'm sure that you are 
over there in the Alam Abba, watching me now to hear from me if I will tell you thank you. Papa, I tell you thank you. If you did not do this big sacrifice to send me to the yeshiva, not to see me for a few years, I would not be today what I am. So again, thank you, Papa. You were right. And from that time, every time I go to Ashdod, the first word I say when, before I read to Tehillim and the gift of my father, I tell him thank you. And yet you go a lot to your graves of your grandfather. I know, yes. What's your grandfather's name? The grandfather of my grandfather, Rabbi Chaim Peter the first, he, he, he's buried in Isawera, and he's, my grandfather, he's buried in Casablanca. He died maybe 75 years old. Tell us about this minhag of visiting the graves of your parents, your grandparents. We hear about a lot of people going to Kivrei Tzadikim. Most of us think it's a very nice spiritual thing, but everybody's saying, should I do it, shouldn't I do it? People don't like to talk about cemetery. The Mara said, Tzadikim nikaim haim. When you go to Hebron, the graves of Abraham, it's Akbi Ago. We feel good there. You go to Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. We feel good there, I don't know. And we are among graves, which uh, they already die, but we feel joy, we feel happiness there. The Nishama is up there, so they are alive. It's an old, old minak. When Moshe Rabbeinu sent the 12 spies to Israel to spy Eretz Kenan, the Torah said that Kaleb bin Yefune, which he was among the, the spies, he went to the Kiv, to Hebron, to the Kivriya Avot, and he was praying there. That means the, the Kivrit Tzadikim, the grief of Tzadikim, it's just to remind their Ma'asim how they served Hashem. It's just to connect to, it's not, it's not you pray to them. No, it's like Abu Zara. It's idolatry to go to, to a kever, give of a tzaddik, and you pray to him. You pray with his zechut. You pray because usually we say, Hashem is like people that they pray by their own zechut. Because who knows that you are a good man? I mean, I cannot say to Hashem, Hashem, please do my favor because I am a tzaddik. So it teaches us to be responsible for one another. Call Israel Arabim Zelaze. It teaches us to go together, have minyan together, do mitzvot together, uh, help each other. Because otherwise, if I cannot go on my own right, I need you, I need my parents, so we need to care for each other. You're right. This is, this is why Hashem, He gave us one mitzvah, and Rabbi Akiva said that this mitzvah, it's uh, equivalent of all the mitzvot. Love your neighbor as yourself. Because always a man will, will find that he is the best. So we tell him, you, maybe you are the best if you are the best with your brother, if you are the best with uh, your friend. But first, it's very important that we should be all together. Look, for instance, in the Tefillah we said, I am a thief, I am a gazlan, I am this, I am a rasha, I am. But there is a lot of tzaddikim that they are not rishaim. There is a lot of tzaddikim. How they can do this tachanun, praying, and they say to Hashem, I am a bad man, I am this. But you are a tzaddik, you are, you are not a bad man. But the tzaddik, he prefer in the eyes of Hashem to show Hashem, Hashem, Please, I am a Rasha. That's what we say, Hatati Aviti, I am a Rasha. So the Tzadikim, they teach, they will not say to a Rasha, you are a Rasha, you are a bad man. He will say to himself, I am a Rasha, I am a bad man. So that the other one will learn this from him. Ah, if the Tzadik, that he's a real Tzadik, he can talk about himself that he's not a good man, he's not a good man, so what about me? You receive people and you give them brachot. 
you go to Kivre Tzadikim, you give people a bottle of water or a bottle of honey, you give them a note, and people come believing that you have some way of helping them. Tell us about that aspect of your belief and your Avodah Hashem. When I was a baby, I used to see my father. When people come to, to, to ask a bracha from him, he used to give me a bottle of water. I remember one day, I said to my father, Papa, why you give them a bottle of water? Is the water that you give them, is, is the refuah, is the, is the medication? What's this? He said, it's a bottle of emunah. It's a bottle of, of emunah, of faith. I mean, when this man, he, he go out for me, he go with imuna. That Hashem, imuna. Who I am to give a bracha to somebody? Who I am to give, to tell somebody, Be'ezat Hashem, you will be well? Who I am? I, I'm nothing. It just, it just, this man came to see you. He want, he want comfort. He need something. Like somebody, he came to see me yesterday, he had cancer. And I said, be strong, you will be well. And he went for me like he was well. And sometimes it works, but imuna. People say that you have an insight, you have kesher, you, you can see certain things. You tell people things that make them believe that you know more than there just is? For this question, there is no answer. You need Seat Ishmaya. You need the help of Hashem. Sometimes, I have to tell you this. God forbid, as we shalom, people should not think I am a prophet, I have a Ruach HaKodesh. Nothing. It's a, it just, when somebody comes to talk to me, it's just HaKadosh Baruch Hu helped me how to help him. Always I pray to Hashem. One thing I pray to Hashem. Please Hashem, help me to help people. If that's what Hashem you want for me, so help me to help people. We have a long tradition of that. We have, uh, if it's Eliyahu or Choniyah Ma'agel, we have a relationship with God unlike any other. We are allowed to challenge God. We can say, God, I insist that you help or do or bring rain. We have the chutzpah to believe that we can talk to God and God listens. You're right. Every Jew, every, every man who believes in Hashem, he can have this chutzpah to talk that way to Hashem. I always, in my, my public lecture, I say to people, hey, I tell you to them, you don't know what you are capable to do. Look, a Jew pray three times a day. We take the book and we pray to Hashem, Baruch Atah Hashem, give me health. Baruch Atah Hashem, give me this. I mean, we are opposed to Hashem. This is the time that everyone talk to Hashem. I mean, not only the tzaddikim talk to Hashem, every Jew, everyone who go to the synagogue to pray to Hashem, he talk to Hashem. And every Jew, he can have this chutzpah to be a choner magal. I'm telling you, I have thousands of stories of people that they are not rabbis, they have, they have no beard, they have no payos, they have nothing. And they pray to Hashem, and, and Hashem answer them. You're talking about faith, but you know, if you have it, you have it. But if you don't, a person comes empty-handed to Hashem, and, and you think you can have faith. How do you know you can have faith? You ask a good questions. I would just ask you one, one question. Do we see, do we see the, you, you know this, we breathe, we breathe. I mean, do we see the air? The air is in the air. <laughs> do we see the air? We don't see the air. Don't forget. Hashem, He is everywhere. 
Hashem, he, there is no empty space that there is not there Hashem. Hashem is everywhere. A man that he considers himself that is not a, he doesn't believe in Hashem. He can talk as much as he wants, but he walk inside Hashem. He walk where Hashem is everywhere. You know what, what David Amalek said? Sa'in, when I lift up my eyes to the sky, I see Marabu Ma'asech Hashem. How great you are, Kadosh Baruch Hu. I mean, a lot of people, from nothing, they become a believer. From nothing. This man who walks in the street, who doesn't believe in nothing, maybe he can see something. As a lot of people did the Teshuvah like that. A lot of people from nothing did the Teshuvah. That is very inspiring. And I'm sure that if we allow ourselves, Hashem will be with us. We usually stop ourselves from seeing Hashem and feeling Him. About more ordinary things, you know, we struggle to live every day. We struggle to have a family, build a house, have money, go to work, do a lot of everyday things. But then the rabbis, the, the books, the Torah tells us that we are responsible to the whole world, tikkun olam. We just want to take care of everyday work and it's hard. How can we fix the world? No one can fix the world, only Hashem. But one thing is clear. I'm not talking only to religious people. To each one that he, is, he live in this world, he should think if he live in this world, so he has a part of the tikkun olam. If I am here, so I'm not here just to eat and to drink and to sleep. If I'm here, so I mean, I should be here. I should feel myself here to do something. So there is people who say, Olam Hasidibani, through doing good things, so you, I mean, you help the Tikkun Olam, you help the construction of the world. Each one who is here, he has a mission to do. Now, it depends what kind of mission. No one knows what, is it, what, it, what it is his mission. No one knows what Hashem he wants from him. No one knows why he is here for. One thing is sure. If you have the chance to be among those who believe of Hashem, Hashem will show you why you are here for. So you can be a part of those of Tikkun Olam. They said, if you build it, they will come. It's a famous movie. So it's a model. It sounds that life is a journey. And your father taught you that if you have a question, one day you'll find the answer. So if you think that you don't see the answer, you just wait. Judaism teaches you not to just dismiss. You have to wait. Wait with Hishtadlut. That's what I hear from you. Last year I was uh, in Auschwitz. And uh, I was with a group of Jewish people. And uh, I was shocked. And I said to myself, how can people say that this is because, you know, there's a lot of people who, who think the, there is no Auschwitz, the, the Jewish people never been killed in Germany. But you see here the reality, you see what was there. And there is one question, why this happened? Maybe that, even me with my beard, I said, why this happened? What, what was the purpose? For two hours I didn't speak, I didn't talk. For two hours I didn't talk. I was, uh, I was in, with my mind, I was thinking, asking, and then I came to an, a beautiful answer. I don't need somebody to give me answers. I ask myself, and I will find my teshuva. I said, David, look at yourself, you are here. You are here, I'm Israel high. Yes, always there is a Shoah. 
But the most important is, Am Israel Hai. The Jewish people are still here. We, see, we have yeshivot, we have schools. We, thanks God, we, we, we're still here. And Baruch Hashem, we have Eretz Israel, and uh, there is, we have uh, our own government, we have, we have uh, a state. Baruch Hashem, what is your question? Ah, but still you have a question. Why well, one day, after 120 years, you will say Hashem, he is the only one who can give you the answer. Because there is no answer. The answer is right. Everybody talk about the Shoah, but there's right now a mother whose child is sick in the hospital and he may be dying. I'm asking about a difficult question. I have a problem asking about why one person hurts. If God is our father, Avinu Malkeinu, and the Shir Shirim, Avinu, Avinu. How can he let somebody hurt, let alone die? The dignity of men, Tselem, when a person hurts, it's like you're hurting God. Each Jew, or each person, is a olam atzmu. Each person is a world. When somebody is in danger, even on Shabbat, we have to light a fire to save him, if we have to do it. If you have to do, if somebody is in danger, you must do everything you can to save him. Hashimi said, forget, forget me, take care of him. That show the love of God that he prefer the person than himself. I know a woman that she was waiting for 22 years to have a baby, and she had a baby when he was 12 years old. He had an accident and he died. Can you imagine that? I was shocked, I was shocked, I was shocked. All the city of Lyon cried that baby. I mean, you cannot imagine. I can't. People came for the Levaya, people who knows the family, and people that they did not know the family. It was terrible, terrible. That was a Shoah, a private Shoah. As I told you before, I was brought up not to ask this kind of question because the answer of this question is not to ask. Because there is no answer. I have no answer. I'm sorry. This is, I don't know how the, the way of Hashem worked. I don't know. One thing I can tell you, that only Hashem knows. A lot of people, because of those, those questions, that, that they have no answer, so they said, if this is the Judaism, so I don't want to believe. So it's unfortunate. So I ask my child, my son, um, I have four boys, Baruch Hashem, I said, I'm going to speak to an important rabbi. What should I ask him? What would you ask him? So he says, he says, can you make deal with Hashem? Can you say, Hashem, I'd like to put tefillin, but I didn't, and I'm busy, but you know I want to put tefillin. Tomorrow I'll do, maybe. Can you make deals with Hashem? I think uh, it's no good to, to accept, to, tell, to teach your children to make deals, because if the deal fail, so that will put his immune and doubt. I don't agree to do deals with Hashem. The only people who can do deals with Hashem, those who knows already Hashem. Those who knows already Hashem, who believe in Hashem. Like last week. Last week, I had a big problem. And I could resolve the problem only by giving my own money. But, by, but that own money that I had, I needed for something else. But on the other hand, I needed to give that money for, to, save, to save a person. So there, I had no choice. I said, Hashem, you don't give me any choice. I have to give this money, but please, I need them today. <laughs> Behemet, I'm telling you, that was 5,000 euros. Hashem is a witness. This is the truth. Amash, it's a... Uh, anyone who wants to believe, he can believe. 
you know what, what we believe? This is his business. I don't know. But this is the image. This is only one, one a story among thousands of millions of deal stories that we can have with Hashem. But you have to be convinced that there is Hashem. And I did give those 5,000 euros. A few hours later, somebody came. He said uh, he came to see me. And it was not it was not in the program that meant he would come to see me. And he told me, you know, I made a big deal uh, this week. And uh, I decided one hour ago to give you my master, my 10 percent. And uh, I took a note. I wrote 5,000. <laughs> and I put the note on the table. Just to for see me, to see. <laughs> and I told him, can I ask you how much you want to give me? He said, you cannot believe. I said, I think I believe because I wrote it here. If it's not you, maybe it's, uh, somebody else will come to give me this. So he said, can I say? I said, no. So he put his hand in the pocket and he gave me 5,000 euros. I told him, take the, take the paper. And he took the paper and was shocked. He said, you lost. I said, I lost? But you give me 5,000. He said, no, this is my first 5,000, and here is my second 5,000. <laughs> so I said to Hashem, if Hashem, if I knew that you would give me double, I would give this money more. <laughs> so you see, I remember my father, Arab Shalom, every time he, he used to ask from Hashem something, he used to get answers. I don't know, I, I, this is, as I told you before, Imuna, it's not limited. There is no limit. So my last question is really my first question, my everyday question. It's your question. What do you tell people who don't come with it? How do you bring him to Give him a chance to taste of your world. You know, Imuna, everyone with his, with his luck. A lot of times I meet somebody just like that in the plane. And just we talk five, ten, few minutes. And there is questions and I am honest. If I cannot answer them, I tell them I have no answer for you. I cannot answer. But if, if I can give an answer, I give it well. I had never forced nobody to believe in God, never. You know, our first identity, our first uh, passport was in Egypt. We were born in Egypt. All Am Israel was made, was born in Egypt. We were all born in the Galut. And even the Galut we remained a good Jew. That means, that a Jew, anywhere where he is, he can be in Israel, he can be in Russia, he can be in Poland, he can be in Morocco, in Europe, in Asia, he can be everywhere. He will find Hashem there. One thing I want to tell you. Abraham, I believe, each second living in Israel, he felt, he, he felt the you know, the existence of Hashem in Eretz Israel. Yaakov Abinu was afraid. He didn't want to leave Eretz Israel until Hashem he promised me, don't, for, don't worry, I will protect you outside Eretz Israel. Because Yaakov thought that maybe he will lose some of his emunah, maybe his children. Israel is our homeland. It's the, it's the, the house of Hashem. Can you imagine that? It's Eretz HaKodesh. It's the house of Hashem. It's opposite to believe that only there they did not reach this level of emunah of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. There is a lot of Israelis, Jewish, from Israel. But when they were in Israel, they were not religious. They came to France and they became religious. They came to America, they became religious. And in Israel, they were not religious. It's something that I don't, I don't understand. But Maybe it's a part of the education. 
Maybe in Israel, nobody gives them nothing. So part two of the same question is, there are people who get a lot of education. We have yeshivot. People go to yeshivot. They go to Eretz Israel to yeshiva. They come back. They take the kippah, put it away. They eat. They don't eat Shabbat, lo Shabbat. But you can see that they're dancing on both weddings. What's missing? I have a lot of friends that they study with me the yeshiva. And when they left the yeshiva, they left everything behind. Even in Yom Kippur, they eat. One of my best friends, my Chavruta, he used to fast on, on, on Monday and Thursday. 20 years later, he don't respect no Shabbat, Kippur, nothing. You have more Yitzhara when you leave the Yeshiva. The more that you want to be close to Hashem, the Yitzhara is stronger on you. So it, this is life, this is a fight. Do you think I don't have Yitzhara? I have a big Yitzhara, Bemet. Do you think I don't want to live like everybody? I won't, but I know that it's not for me. So it's a fight. A rabbi told me God gives everything and it's opposite. Yes. Everything is in the hand of Hashem, but not a religion. Religion, it's your work. This is your tachri, that you come here to serve Hashem. It's your passport. You know, when I come to America, the police, they look at you, they take a picture of you, and they take the digital fingers, and uh, I was thinking, why did they do this? Why did they do this? Because they want to know who I am. And uh, they want to know who I am, or if I do something bad, so they know it's, you. it's me. You see, Hashem has all this hidden, all these rec records, he have them there. After 120 years, when I arrived there, he want to see, he will see the original, and he will see what you are. So he will compare. That's why the Gemara said, "Ashrei mishibah lekan bepassport biyado vitalmudu biyado." Ashrei mish. How much a man should be happy when he arrived there after 120 years, and that he has with him all his luggage. Mitzvot, Ma'asim Tovim, his passport, with his pictures, with his, his real identity that Hashem put on him before he was born. I mean, I have to go back there the same way I come here. Baruch Atah Bebo'echa, Baruch Atah Betzetecha. I'd like if you can finish with a Zmira. A song that always my father used to sing on Shabbat. It's a, it's a song that uh, he talked about how Hashem is strong, how Hashem is big. Aromim ha Hashem, Eloke Yisrael, Hamatzil ha Goel, Midehi et Ragli, Hamatzil ha Goel, Midehi et Ragli, Nivhati Meir A, Mitsuga Uga A, Meniti Kiamati, Mataragli. Nyaniti ki amati mataragali Yadecha asuni vehem koninu Ni Hashem hone ni Ina oze li hai male mi iba Umatcha hakriva Otrava avarech otra Wonderful. It's a long song, but I uh, made it short. I wish that I could spend with you more time. Hashem, He is everywhere, as I said before. But one thing I tell you, and I finished. Yeah. Don't think it's easy to be a Jew. It's very difficult. Bemet. Somebody came to tell me, to ask me, I wanted to convert. 
had told him, you are doing a mistake. It's not easy to beat you. I tried to, because I wanted to tell him, don't see the facade of the Jewish days. It's not easy. And then I realized this man who really wanted to be Jew. I met him 25 years ago, and today he's a big rabbi. So what is amazing about him, that today, when I ask him, now tell me, are you happy what you are now? He said, Rabbi David, thank you that you did not push me. I realize that how good it is to be Jewish, but with Imuna. Kol Israel is a Helik Aramaba. Every Jew he has Aramaba. Every Jew is a Jew. Every Jew has something. I was in Israel during the war of uh, the Lebanon, and I saw how the uh, non religious people, how they, they welcome the religious people to their house when the, the Bambi go. I said to myself, Hashem, you see, the Jewish people are fantastic. Bemet, just they don't know. Look at me. Who knows if I am a tzaddik? Who knows if I am a good Jew? Only Hashem knows. Only Hashem can judge. How I, who am I to say this man is a tzaddik because why? Is that because he has a beard? Because he has a, has a, a big head? Who has you know? What? That? That's not. A, that's not a proof. Only Hashem knows. The most important is each one of us should work in his Judaism. God bless you. Thank you.